The Storyport tool is an editor utility widget paired with a few advanced cameras that is designed to streamline and extend the image capturing process in Unreal Engine 4. This video is a brief intro to using the tool, and see the description below for links to the marketplace, a trailer board, and any other associated content. To start with, there is an overview map of this tool found in third-party virtual production tools storyboard tool demo map. It's in this environment to help you demo the tool. To find the tool, go up one level, and there's this VP storyboard tool. Right-click it and hit Run Editor Utility Widget. When it opens, you're going to ignore this because I already have cameras in this scene, and start by creating a new storyboard from scratch. I'm going to type in a name for the storyboard and click the plus mark to add a new storyboard. And I will click this VP Cine camera here, which spawns one of the advanced cameras into the world. Navigating the camera around, I can set the view that I want and name the camera how I would like. Add a second camera. Each time I select this spawn camera, it adds a new camera and starts pirating it for me. And then I can start stepping through the cameras by clicking the little airplane for pilot camera. If I think that I should, these cameras should be reordered inside the storyboard, I can grab the left side bar, drag them around, and shift them into whatever order I want. Anytime that I've done something that I would like to save, I'm going to hit the Save Storyboard button. On our details of our camera here, there's Select the Camera, which selects it in the Outliner, and opens up a Details panel here with the most commonly used functions. Pilot the camera we've already seen. Take a screenshot, which takes a screenshot, places it into a folder that is named the same as the current master level that you're working in with the date and some associated information instead of just high resolution screenshot one. And then once I've taken an image, I can click this refresh button here and it will import the image and set it as a thumbnail. Below that, is an icon to lock and unlock the camera and the ability to show and hide actors when I jump into this camera. So if in this camera I did not want to see these boxes but in the other cameras I did, I can select those boxes, hide them, green saves the currently hidden objects to this camera, and then the white above it will show hide. So now if I jump between this camera and my previous camera with the hidden, those hidden objects are still hidden. Red will delete the hidden objects that have been saved. Next down the line is duplicating the camera. If I like this view with the saved objects that I have in it, to duplicate it and then shift it around. And the final is remove the camera from the storyboard. It does not delete the camera, it just takes it out of the storyboard. If I had a camera such as this reverse here, that I wanted to bring into the storyboard, I can select it, it selected the board, and if I felt that my naming needed to be in alphabetical order, I could click the sort cameras A to Z button next to it. Now I've got my reverse V1, V2, V3. On the right hand side of this window is, this is a collection of the most commonly used camera settings as well as the majority of the camera settings that have been added to the tool. At the top is the ability to change custom lenses. This references data table here. If I open it up, you'll see I have camera name, lens name, the film back, as well as a bunch of other information. These are real world values of the camera. I also have the option to set a mesh for the lens and the body, and that can change between every camera lens combination. Going down the line, each of these cameras has a minimum focus distance associated with it just trying to replicate the real world as much as possible. The ability to link your aperture and your post process and your focus settings and the ability to set a cropped aspect ratio. If 
I was in 185 instead of 239. Now when I switch between the cameras, they're all cropped to the 185 aspect ratio while still maintaining the correct field of view measurements. The other major section in this is the camera mode. This is a series of different post-process effects for these cameras, such as adding a heads-up display to the camera with the name and the camera's information, a scene depth, the ability to get a color by ID pass, which you set up by clicking the set up color by ID down here, a line drawing view, the ability to have a line drawing view that highlights the cameras, the standard render with outlines, an ambient occlusion, and just a base color pass. There's the ability to turn on or off the different meshes of the camera, as well as to show or hide them in game view, and the ability to show and hide frustrums as 3D objects. So if I have this camera selected and I click show frustrum, you'll see it starts about 80 centimeters away from the nodal point of the camera, which is the minimum focus distance of this lens. I can change the length of the frustrum, its opacity, and show a focus plane. So if I were to focus this camera close, see this purple focus plane shows up. Last thing in this section is the camera info plate. So if I turn this on, I can set it to align in whatever direction I want, and it will show me the associated information with this camera. And if it has a screenshot associated with it, it will show that screenshot. Next up in the line is the orthographic projection camera. I add one of these out into the world and select it. And pilot a top down 2D view showing the information through this camera's lens. One important note is that if you see this line across it, you need to kick out of the camera, go into game view, and then pilot that camera once more. With that camera selected, I can start showing and hiding the cameras in my view. So right now I'm in game view, so I need to set this camera to visible in game view. There's the camera, and if I had the frustrum on with this camera, you would see the frustrum in the rendering as well. Last up in the cameras is the cube map camera. So if I spawn one of these out into the world. This is a tool for generating 360 sphere images for use with a cell phone or tablet. So I have this camera selected. I'm going to update the camera. And you'll see it's a 360 image. Add that camera and pilot this one, but then take a screenshot through this camera. And upload it to my phone so I can walk around on set with a 360 sphere. The last thing to talk about is the anamorphic lens calculator found in that same storyboarding tool folder. Since Unreal out of the box does not have the ability to use anamorphic lenses, this is a simple calculator that if I type in a film back, 36 by 24, and it's a 2.0 squeeze factor with a 35 millimeter lens in that setup, I can calculate these are the values that I should plug into the film back and field of view settings of my camera to make sure that it lines up with the real world as much as possible. That's all I have. Thank you for watching.